All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to talk about gain structure and setting it up, kind of the fundamentals of it, and simple way to kind of approach it and end up with um, good outcomes, um, different ways of doing it. I did a video on com the difference in sound between gain and attenuators, and um, used a, a null to show that they sound uh, virtually or identical. Uh, virtually identical to each other, and um, they can be used interchangeably. The challenge, though, that we face with gain structure is um, the ergonomics, where are the knobs sitting, the visuals, um, where are the knobs sitting physically? Are they all the way at the end of their motion, and uh, we can't move them down or up farther? Uh, the visuals, are they visually in a logical position that allows us to mix fluidly? and then uh, noise floor on the bottom end and distortion on the top end, um, staying away from those two extremes. And so we're kind of um, trying to tailor the signal to fit and get those four dynamics together. Um, I've got a pretty simple setup here, a cheap mixer. Uh, what I'm gonna show you will work on this, it'll work in digital, it'll work just about, it'll work on anything really um, because the concepts are the same. And I've got a music player, um, Better Than Nothing, Thank You, Rhea Rosa Band, and JT O'Neill for letting me use the song here on YouTube. Uh, I've got a pulse um, popper checker, phase checker, the pulse, uh, sending a quick, sharp pulse that I'll use. It's kind of acts like a kick drum to deal with a very dynamic signal. Um, and like plucking guitars or anything that's got a lot of, um, you know, uh, dynamics to it. And then I've got a tone generator set at 150 cycles, which will play a tone, which just kind of gives you the idea like what a bass guitar or any of these, a keyboard or something that's got a more consistent. So very dynamic, very consistent, and then music uh, combination between uh, should be good enough for what we're trying to do. Um, staying away from the two extremes. Uh, noise floor. Noise floor is the electronic hiss or hum that's induced on cables. And when we have lots of gain turned up, we're going to bring that noise. We're either going to be adding that hiss in from the gain stage or we're going to elevate the audibility and level of some noise that's induced somewhere in the signal chain. Um, once the gain, once the signal has been gained up really high, uh, it gets harder to introduce noise to it. But when a signal is gained up really high and you've added a lot to it, as it gets close to the limitations of the mic preamp and the electronics involved, we can introduce distortion. Um, and so staying between those two end caps of um, acceptable noise level and acceptable distortion levels uh, is our goal. Okay, so let's start with, I'm going to energize this and then turn it back off again. And I'll bring this up and let's go ahead and listen to hiss, what happens when. So now bring the fader up, the gain's all the way down, and we don't hear any noise. Oh, I've got running through these two little speakers here um, and this little amplifier. Now I'll bring this up and as I bring the gain up, you can hear very high gain, got a lot of hiss. And there's no, if I was to turn that on, it probably, um, it just shut off. If I was to turn that on, it'd be extremely loud and distorted. Okay, so um, that's the noise. So we don't want to have excessive gain. So if I turn this music player on and I turn it down all the way to almost as low to one below, one above off, and I bring this up. And now the gain is up really high. Just you. Go ahead and pause it, and you can, I can hear it. I'm going to bring it up some. So there's a good part of the signal is hiss, because I've got the player turned down all the way. I'm sending a very low signal, and I'm gaining it up a lot. Um, we ideally wouldn't do that. We would set the player at, I'm going to set it at, um, half volume, let's say, for this. And now, um, when I play it, we're seeing the clip light because it gains up all the way. I'll turn it down. And if I do the same thing, 
um, we don't have that hiss. Okay, so let's go ahead and set some gains. Um, what I'll do is I'll start the player setting up at half gain. I'm sending a significant level to it. Half to three quarters on the output. Usually seven is what people will set things to if it's a, uh, a gain stage, five to, uh, you know, 50% uh, or 70% on a one to 10 scale. Or if it's going over the top, you're looking at 12 o'clock to three o'clock, somewhere in there. Um, so we're playing the music. And what I'll do is very simple, is you just bring the gain up Till you see the clip light, bring it down until the clip light's barely on, and then go maybe another two clicks down, maybe go an hour and a half on a two hours down from there. Um, that's gonna get you pretty darn close to away. Now, if it's a very dynamic signal, you wanna make sure that it's gonna be uh, at the level that it's being played. Uh, a lot of times bands get excited during the show and they'll play a lot harder, so you might wanna go uh, even farther than that, so we don't get into clipping. Uh, we can, we'll listen to clipping as well in a bit. Um, and that's just a reasonably good starting point. It's not that hard. Um, we can do the same thing with the pulse checker, with the pulse source, and that's planned, and we'll bring it up. There it's clipping, and we'll bring it down. So it stops clipping. And there it's just about, I would say, 9.30 on the hour hand, um, halfway between 9 and 10. And I'm going to bring it down to 9, 8. I'm bringing it down to about 8 o'clock. Um, looks good to me. And then with the tone, let's go ahead and bring that up. And that's all the way up. Ooh, we don't have enough gain there. Let's bring that up here. And... That's all the way up around 3.30, about 3 o'clock, and I'm going to bring it down to 1. All right, so now I've set my gains for the three different signals we're dealing with. The next thing I would do is set my output fader on this configuration right now. I've got it here on this single. I'm not using the stereo out. So I'll set that at the zero level because I really want to have... Um, some room to go up, plus 10 up there and down a bit, but I want to have it up uh, in a nice place there. And now let's see what happens. So as soon as I barely move this fader, it's getting pretty loud. And this, let's go ahead and turn it up. All right, so I'm hitting max volume and I'm barely moving this fader up a uh, quarter of an inch from the bottom. Um, that happens a lot. If you have too much PA for the room, um, or you've got a PA with output capabilities much higher than the actual level that you're going to run it, you, um, or it, you know, it's very rare that you won't, you have everything matched to where everything's just going to line up perfect. Now, what do I do here? I have several choices. One, I could bring down my output fader and bring up my input fader. And now I got the same problem over here instead of over there. I could split the difference, bring this one halfway down and this one halfway down. But now I've got my faders dive down in the bottom. And one of the problems with having your faders near the bottom is we can show that here. I'm gonna bring this up to zero and I'm gonna set my finger so I can about this distance and I'm gonna wiggle the fader between them. So that's with my fader just wider than the fa uh, thing. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the output turned down, and I'll bring the input up. So what you heard is a lot of uh, vibrato effect, um, tremolo, vi vibrato effect when it was down near the bottom because it's very gainy. It's very sensitive. Faders are very sensitive. A lot of dB change for very little motion down at the bottom of the... Um, of the um, slide there and once you get up to that two-thirds point right around the zero there's going they're going to be a lot less sensitive and you're going to have a lot more ability to fine-tune things so we really want to get these faders up into this range uh, let's do the same thing with the pulse checker i'll bring this up to where i want it at the zero level I'll bring the now here with this pulse i did the exact same thing on the gain delay because i'm actually able to get it up 
quite a bit louder. I'll bring the music up. So the kick drum is running pretty hot and the more continuous signal music is running down real low. Let's do the same thing with the tone. And I'll kind of bounce out. Maybe if that was a show, I'd have them in there somewhere. Maybe I'd EQ the kick drum. Okay, so if I was gonna mix this tone with this uh, pulse, with this music, I'd end up with something like that. Now, look at this fader setup, it's terrible. We've got everything pushed to the bottom. Um, it's just a mess. So how do we resolve that? This happens if you find that when your gain is set properly, you set at the clip level, you've backed it off a couple hours from there, and uh, your uh, faders are all pushed down or in a, in a disparate position, um, it's very difficult to mix. So what I would do in this situation is, I would, uh, let's pick my music, is I would go to the amp and I would turn down or I'd go somewhere else in signal chain because I want to send, you want to send hot and turn down late. Send hot, turn down late. So if we send a lot of signal down the return snake to the amps and then turn it down the amps, what's gonna happen is the signal will come in, it'll come down the line, any noise will get induced, and then when you turn down the amps, it'll turn down the noise and the signal together and you'll have a good setup. If you do the opposite and you send it very low and turn it up at the end, then the signal's very low and the noise is added in and then it brings the noise up. So sending hot to the amp, so we'll go ahead and set this up, and we'll bring the amp down. And we'll get the music up into a decent spot. And one of the reasons we sound check kick drum early in the uh, sound check scenario is it is a very dynamic pulse. Kick and snare, um, and they're unusual to deal with compared to the continuous signals and a little more tricky. So let's go ahead and see what happens with the kick drum now I've turned the amp down. Now I don't have enough gain on the kick drum because I use the music to set the overall level. So now I got to find something in between the two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the amp back up halfway between the two. Um, and I'm going to set my levels using the kick. Now I've got a good solid kick sound. I've got my faders where I want them. I've got the kick at zero. Um, I can check my clip light. There's my clip. I'm down below clip. My kick drum, I'm well set up. Everything looks good. Now let's go ahead and bring up the tone. Now here, we again have set up. So now our, our bass or our tone, our consistent signal is way too low. How do I adjust for that? Well, the gain, we've got a lot of room between that hiss and distortion range. The, the clip on the kick, the kicks run, the dynamic signals like kick drum, you want to run them hot on the gains. And the more continuous tones, you have some freedom with those. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to gain down the tone quite a bit until I get my fader where I want it. Or conversely, what I'll do is I'll gain down all the way and I'll put my fader where I want it. Let's say I want it at zero. And then I'll gain up until the mix is correct. Now, next thing I'll do is bring the music in, try and get the mix. I'm gonna gain those down, or gain that down. It's this combination, using the kick drum or an instrument or whatever uh, percussive instruments are a good starting point, but using a combination of the instruments to set your amp levels early on in the adventure here. Um, setting the gains, bringing up your outputs, getting your faders where you want them, and 
using your gains to fine tune the faders to get. So what I'm really looking for here is I want to have my faders look a certain way. If this was a console and I had ki uh, kick, snare, bass, guitar, voc uh, vocal, vocal, I want my kick drums to be, I want my kick to be there. I want my snare to sit a little low. I want my bass to sit um, right up near the kick. I want my um, guitar to be up near there. And I'd like my uh, vocals, actually I'd take all those down a little bit, and I'd have my vocals up here, up maybe at zero. So everything kind of sits below. I'll look for a look where the visuals on the faders kind of match the mix that I'm hearing live. I don't, I don't want everything flat because I want my vocals on top and I want them to look on top. Uh, I want my kick drum fairly hot. I want it to look hot. I want to pull the snare back or have the, I want, I want to match the look, match the, um, what I'm hearing. So after you've set your gain pots and you've got them below clip, and then you've set up your output faders where your output uh, drive uh, in the spot you want that to be, then bringing up the music to the volume that you want it to be and using your amp to adjust down. So uh, turning it down at the amp until your rest of your faders look like or your main faders look like where they want to be. Um, uh, and then using your gain pots to adjust that final positioning of the fader is uh, the process that I go through. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, we could listen to distortion real quick and then we'll call it. Um, I'll take the music. Put that one on. So, overloaded mic pre. We want to stay out of that. And I've got this set up to cancel too. So I've actually got these um, this music in two versions, one in the polarity and one out. So what we can do is we can do some of that. So there, I'm using the music to cancel itself out. So that's what the distortion sounds like. Um, I'm using, I'm canceling out most of the music with the out of polarity. And watch what happens if I just turn it up. So what I'm doing there is I actually have the input preamp distorting, and then I've got another version of the music out of polarity, canceling out the, all the non-distorted music so we can listen to the distortion component in the music there. Um, kind of fun. All right, gain structure. Um, keep in mind the four things you want. You want to stay out of the noise floor. You want to stay away from the overload distortion. You want to create a scenario that is ergonomically um, productive to work on, where your faders are in the middle range somewhere around that minus 10 or minus 15, minus 20 to the zero or plus three range, kind of in the middle third of the fader uh, range. And you want it visually to be paralleling either what you're hearing or what you're trying to accomplish. And so your mix looks correct. Okay, cool, cool. Hope that is helpful.